Margaret. Uh, Kian Korla, as we mark the first anniversary on Friday of Russia's brutal and horrific invasion of Ukraine just one year ago, uh, I'm proud to speak on behalf of the Labour Party and I want to start by paying tribute to the immense courage and resilience of the Ukrainian people as they have experienced the horrific uh, firepower of Russia over the last year. And I want to pay tribute to President Zelensky, uh, to his government and indeed to our friend here in Ireland, the Ukrainian ambassador Larissa Garasco for her steadfast advocacy on behalf of her country and her people. As the brutal Russian invasion continues, Can Corla, we've learnt about the carrying out of horrific war crimes in Bucha and across other, other cities and towns too, about the appalling siege of civilians in Mariupol some months ago and the atrocities and war crimes committed in many cases against women and children by Russian forces across a peaceful and democratic country in Europe. We've seen the devastation in the Donetsk, Donetsk region. We've seen in enormous displacement of people, some six million people internally displaced in Ukraine, eight million refugees recorded across Europe. That figure representing about 19% of the Ukrainian population at 2021. We've seen tens of thousands killed, civilians and soldiers, and, uh, and that on sad death toll continues. We heard just this morning uh, a report from UNICEF about the horrific impact upon children of injuries and deaths uh, as a result of mortar bombs from, from Russia. These reports have horrified us all and they show the need for an intensification of our collective response. While we in Labour have welcomed the rounds of, U of EU sanctions and indeed welcomed the expulsion last year by government of four diplomatic staff from the Russian Embassy in Ireland, we do believe that stronger measures need to be taken. And indeed President Zelensky in his address to these houses last year called on us to do that and told us our leadership can make a difference. So I'm renewing my call, Minister, uh, for the expulsion of the Russian Ambassador from Ireland as he continues to mount brazen denials of the truth of what is happening in Ukraine and what his government is doing to the people of Ukraine. We're also calling, Minister, for the government to show strong support for Ukraine's expedited accession to the European Union and for an urgent initiation of investigations into Russian war crimes against civilians. And we're also calling for speedy passage into law of Deputy Brendan Howland's Magnitsky legislation that we in Labour brought forward in the Dáil in December 2021, before the invasion, and which would give additional powers, significant additional powers, to sanction Russian uh, war criminals. Uh, Minister, Putin has shown that he wants to wipe Ukraine off the map and he wants to abolish Ukraine's culture and its history. He must fail and he, and, it, and he will fail. And we, as a militarily neutral country, and we're very proud in Labour of defending our military neutrality, but we must not and cannot be politically neutral in the face of this brutal aggression from the Russian uh, leadership. Putin is the aggressor, he is the bully. Uh, there's no moral equivalence and that's why we in Labour are happy to support the government motion, the wording of the government motion, which unequivocally Unequivocally expresses solidarity with the people of Ukraine and takes a clear stance against Russian aggression. That's why we cannot support the amendments put forward, and indeed we believe they are misguided, because they suggest a moral equivalence. In condemning NATO and in calling for an immediate ceasefire, they suggest that there is an e equality of bargaining power on both sides. They under, uh, undermine or choose to ignore the fact that there is one bully here, one aggressor, and we cannot be morally or politically neutral in the face of that aggression. This is personal for me. My grandfather was imprisoned by the Nazis and then fled his home country, the Czech Republic, uh, because he foresaw the Soviet takeover there. He found refuge here in Ireland with his young family, including my father, who was born in the Czech Republic. And he re-established Waterford Glass, and there's now a plaza named for him in Waterford. And his contribution shows the immense benefit to Irish society and the Irish economy of inward migration. Uh, my father's home country, the Czech Republic, has taken in 400,000 Ukrainian refugees, the highest number per head of population in Europe. And I'm proud of that response in the Czech Republic, but I'm very proud in Ireland that we've taken in such a high proportion also, that we've taken in 77,000 Ukrainian refugees. That's a matter of pride, and communities across Ireland have shown such immense solidarity and generosity in welcoming Ukrainian refugees here. Certainly the government does need, I think, to show more a more coordinated approach in in meeting the needs of refugees and communities who are welcoming them. We need to see a strong public information campaign and I do want to pay tribute to all of those who are involved in the collective national effort, uh, the Ukraine Civil Society Forum, Ukrainian Action and Helping Irish Hosts here. And we in opposition want to play our part in that national effort of welcoming uh, Ukrainian refugees here who are fleeing such appalling carnage and brutality from, uh, from Putin. I think there is immense solidarity here in Ireland with the Ukrainian people and that's why I think it's important we do have a 
cross-party consensus on this simple government motion calling for solidarity with Ukraine and calling for condemnation outright and unequivocally of the brutal bullying tactics of Russia. So I want to conclude, Minister, by saying uh, we stand, I think, collectively with Ukraine in this House. We stand with Ukraine in Ireland. Slava Ukraini. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah.